Chef AJ here. How you doing? If you're unfamiliar with me or my work, I have been following a plant-exclusive diet for nearly 42 years. I'm actually the most recent inductee into the Vegan Hall of Fame. I'm the author of three books, including Unprocessed, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, and the soon-to-be-released A Date with Dessert. And today I'm going to be showing you eight recipes that will help you lose weight and feel great using vinegar great quality vinegar from California balsamic. And this video was inspired by an email from Adriana. You see, she had seen some of the previous recipe videos I had done using these wonderful vinegars, and she ordered a bunch of them, and she loved them. And then she emailed me saying that she had to have major abdominal surgery and that she was no longer able to ingest any raw vegetables. And so since she couldn't eat salad, she didn't know what to do with the vinegars and she offered so generously to send them to me. And that is so kind of you, Adriana, and I hope you heal very quickly from your surgery. But you inspired me to make this video because even if you can't eat raw vegetables, there's so many other wonderful things you can do with these wonderful reduced vinegars. So I am gonna show you eight simple, easy, delicious, healthy recipes using them that will help you lose weight and feel great. And I hope you enjoy. So the first thing I am going to make is roasted vegetables because she did say she could still eat vegetables if they were cooked. So what I'm gonna do, and you can do this with any vegetable, anytime I'm at Rancho La Puerta teaching, and by the way, I'm booked there next January 4th, if you'd like to take hands-on cooking with me at the most beautiful spot in the world, we go out to the garden and we pick whatever is in season, whether it's Brussels sprouts or turnips, butternut squash, cauliflower, this works on every single vegetable. But since I have a bag of organic broccoli, that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna put it in a bowl, and then I'm gonna pick some flavors. So. Let's see what I'd like to do today. I, I sort of like, I'm sort of a vinegar alchemist, so I sort of like to mix them. And um, I love the, I love all of them, but I love the teriyaki, but I like it a little bit hotter, so I'm gonna use a little bit of sweet heat. And all you do is take an equal amount of mustard, and I like the salt-free West Gray mustard, which I get on Amazon and actually gets delivered the same day. So I just take an equal amount, and truthfully, I really don't measure, and I'm using the bottle because there's some in there and there's no point in wasting. This will just help me access it. So equal amounts of mustard and vinegar. If you don't like mustard, still try this because I didn't like mustard either or vinegar until I had this recipe. I didn't even like Brussels sprouts until I had this recipe. But you seriously could do this with just the vinegar. You don't need to use the mustard if you don't want to. It just gives it a nice flavor. Mustards are very different. Like I don't like grape poupon, but I love this West Spray. It's not spicy. So I just put it on the broccoli or whatever vegetable I'm using and I just kind of stir it up. I probably should have cut this a little bit smaller and I am going to add a little bit more vinegar because oh that's good. You can't have too much of this stuff. Isn't this a beautiful spoon? Tammy Kramer of Nutmeg Notebook gave it to me as a housewarming present. Not, not just the spoon the whole set but it is so beautiful. It's purple. It's my favorite color. And people think you can't roast without oil. Well, that's not true. You can roast, you could even roast vegetables with nothing on them. You don't even need the vinegar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the air fryer because it's here and it goes a lot quicker than the oven. Also, I live in the desert now, so it's really hot here. So I don't wanna turn my oven on. So I'm going to use the air fryer. The Breville's already being used for another recipe. I'm gonna just use this Go Wise, and I'm just gonna put my broccoli in there, and I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna turn it on. I do everything about 20 minutes at 400, because that's just how I roll, and we'll show you how it works. So one down and seven to go. Now, another way you can use vinegars is not even just for vegetables, but for breakfasts, for desserts. And so I'm gonna show you a few really cool ways and also for beverages. So what I'm gonna do is make a chia oat pudding. I'm, I, I, chia seeds have a weird kind of gummy texture to me, but they're great for thickening things. So I like to put a little bit of oats in my chia pudding because it just makes it more toothsome and less kind of weird to me, but you could do it without the oats. But first I'm gonna make the milk. And so I like, when I'm doing a sweeter recipe, I like to make my own milk and I'm gonna make banana milk. If you wanna know how to make milk from just anything, like a nut or a grain, I have many recipes in my first book on process and many free videos on YouTube 
I believe it's episode six and 10 of the Chef and the Dietitian showing you how to do this. So to make my banana milk, I'm going to take one cup of water and one banana and make sure your banana's ripe because if it's not, it's not going to be sweet. And I'm gonna put it in the blender and then I'm going to blend. This might be a little loud, I apologize. I don't know how to edit, so just put your ears, fingers in your ears. This is a ball jar, and I believe these are about four cups. So I've got my one and a half cups of banana milk. You could use any non-dairy milk, preferably one without sugar, oil, or salt, or any kind of weird chemicals. So just use the one you like. And then to that, I am going to add three tablespoons of chia seeds that I've already measured out. Chia seeds are high in those omega-3 fatty acids that people seem to worry about, but you don't need to. And I'm gonna add some spices. I've got a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and 1 16th teaspoon of cardamom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna shake it up. Now this will need to thicken overnight. It's not gonna be thick right away. The chia seeds are amazing for thickening things. Now, so how am I gonna use vinegar in here? Well, for my palate, this was sweet enough. I don't require sweeteners anymore, even though for 43 years, that's pretty much all I ate was sugar. So traditionally, chia pudding will have some kind of sweetener in it, like a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup or even date syrup. But the problem is they're pretty caloric and for people that are suffering from sugar addiction, I don't even recommend date syrup. Even dates could be too caloric or, or triggering for them. All sugar is about 16 calories a teaspoon, so a tablespoon of any sweetener is about 60 calories. But a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar is about 30. It's about half, it has less grams of sugar. Not that you have to worry about the sugar in balsamic vinegar, it's just for the grapes. But what I did to play off the blueberry and the cardamom is I took one of my favorite flavors of California balsamic called Simply Lemon. I showed you how to use this before in one of the videos, making Italian sodas and using it on asparagus or broccoli, but it goes so well in here. And just two tablespoons provides just that amount of oomph and sweetness and je ne sais quoi, look at this. You can tell that I really use this flavor because it's, it's empty now. And then I'm going to add two cups of blueberries. If you can get fresh blueberries, there, I just love them in here. I like frozen blueberries if I'm doing oats and other things, but for, for this kind of thing, I love the big old fresh organic blueberries. I got these at Trader Joe's. I've also seen them at Costco. And then I'm gonna add the two cups of blueberries. And this is basically it. I'm gonna show you what a, one that I made yesterday looks like, because you can see that this is not clear at all. Now this is the recipe, but as I said, it's got a weird texture to me, chia seeds. So just to make it a little bit more toothsome, I am going to add a half a cup of gluten-free oats, just because I like it. Now this is different than overnight oats, where I would add probably two cups of oats, but just enough to make it palatable for me. So. I'm gonna stir that up. I'm gonna stick it in the refrigerator overnight, and tomorrow I will have this delicious pudding. And this is very rich. You know, chia seeds are very high in fat, so are oats. So I would say that this, for me, this is probably two to three servings, depending on when I'm eating it. But easy peasy, lemon squeezy, some other flavors that might, I wouldn't do teriyaki or sweet heat in here, but peach would be good, pear would be good. Let me show you what a finished one looks like. you turn it over, it doesn't even move. It's nice and thick and delicious. Real easy. Okay, two down and six to go. So next, I am going to show you one of my favorite summer treats. This is called the Creamy Cantaloupe Cooler. So what happened is my friend Maxine, who lives in my community, she's in UWL, gave me a cantaloupe one day. And I don't dislike cantaloupe, I don't dislike any fruit to be honest, it's just not my favorite. I like honeydew better and watermelon better, and I'm like, oh, what am I gonna do? I don't really like to eat cantaloupe all that much unless it's the sugar kiss. So when in doubt, blend it or dehydrate it or air fry it. So what I do is make this really yummy 
uh, beverage that I'm going to show you right now. But first I want to show you how to cut a cantaloupe because a lot of people don't know that how you cut things is important. When I taught the blind students at the Braille Institute, teaching this stabilizing cup was really important because it's hard to cut round things because they're moving. So you always have to make a cut of something round so that it's not round anymore. And always your hand is like a claw, so if you did cut yourself, hopefully you wouldn't. So you just cut a little bit off of one end. So now we've taken a round object and now it's not round anymore. So this is how Chef Bravo taught me to cut melon at Tree North, because I've worked there every Christmas for about 10 years, and there's a lot of fruit to cut up, a lot of big watermelons and honeydews. So basically what you do is you just kind of go around like this. Now don't worry, I'm not wasting anything, because the truth is, if there is any goodness to eat here, I'll eat it a little bit later. I'm not gonna throw it away. But this is really just the quickest way that I know of to get the peel off. If you have more time, you can take more time. But like I said, don't worry, I don't throw anything out. So you just go all the way around, and you do the same thing if you're doing a watermelon, if you're doing a honeydew. Just cut, 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 all the way around. They actually have a melon at Trader Joe's that's quite fascinating. It's a honeydew and cantaloupe hybrid. Okay. So yes, I probably could have done that, you know, and had a little more flesh, but I will eat it, so don't worry. And then we'll cut it in half, we'll get rid of the seeds. You know, truthfully, you could blend the seeds. I mean, I don't think there would be anything wrong with eating them. Let me go get this. What I love about these spoons from Tammy Kramer is that every one is a different color. It's so beautiful. So again, this would be a small cantaloupe because for this recipe, I'm not looking for the big, usually I buy the biggest one, especially if they're all the same price. But for this, I'm just getting, you know, a rather small cantaloupe. I'm putting it in my blender. And I'm going to add 12 ounces of club soda. Now, it is my hope that very soon I'll have something called a soda stream machine so that I don't have to have any more recycling and worry about that. But for now, I am going to use a, either a can or a bottle. So I just want you to get one that doesn't have any stevia or artificial, those natural flavors, no good. Just get a clean one, like one that's just club soda. But I'm gonna use this one because it's really good. It's from Trader Joe's, there's no salt, there's nothing. It says carbonated water, ginger juice, and organic lime juice. That's it, or lemon juice, excuse me. Because it really does blend itself well to this recipe. And I'm going to pour it into the blender. I'll tell you a story in a minute how this recipe came to be. It happened to be because of a transit strike in San Francisco one year that I even thought of it. But first I want to add my next ingredients and I am gonna be using the peach, this peach vinegar from California Balsamic in this recipe is amazing. Peach and cantaloupe are just a natural complement to each other. And again, two tablespoons. So you see that when I'm using these vinegars, a little goes a long way because they're so flavorful. The reason my bottles are empty is because I eat them every day with my salads and vegetables and the sauces. But you can see two tablespoons in each recipe. That's a very, very reasonable amount. Now, I'm going to blend this. So again, cover your ears if you're listening with headphones, but I don't know how to blend things without doing the blender. popsicle mold if you have like the Tupperware one that I showed once on a Tupperware show. And the other thing I do is the next time that I make this, instead of using ice, this is going to be my ice cube. So it's going to be double strength. I'll put that in the freezer in just a moment. So then 
you grab the prettiest glass you can find, and this, you would swear this has dairy in it. This is like unbelievable. Prettiest glass that you can find, and I'm looking for my straw. I always use a glass straw. It's purple. I can't find it right now, but to your health. I promised to tell you how I invented this beverage. So many years ago, close to 25 years ago, when Charles and I first got married, we were visiting San Francisco, and it was one of the hottest days of the year, over 100, and there was a transit strike. And we were just, we were vegan. We weren't sugar-free, oil-free, salt-free, that, but, but we just wanted something to drink other than water. So we stopped at Ben and Jerry's, and they did have a vegan sherbet, and they made this drink where they actually took club soda and the lime sherbet, and it was delicious, and it always stuck with me. So there we go. I think I've done three repis, three repisodes. Repisodes is a recipe episode. Three, I've got uh, a few to go. Okay, so let's get this going. So I decided to make one of my favorite dishes, which is rutabaga fries, which are in this air fryer right here. The only problem is I went out of tomato paste, so I couldn't bake my ketchup. So I made these in the Breville, and I'm gonna be honest, I ate most of them already, but these are amazing. All these are are rutabagas, which are a non-starchy vegetable. I cut them into fry shape. I put nothing on them. I put them at the air fryer at 400 for about, you know, 30 minutes or so. And I like them a little more well done, but you would swear that you're actually eating potatoes. These taste just like potatoes. And they look like potatoes, yet they're non-starchy. The thing is, is I like my potatoes. I've always liked my potatoes, not with ketchup, but with barbecue sauce. And I've showed you on a few YouTubes, there's a couple recipes in my book where I make my own barbecue sauce and my own ketchup. The problem is, is it calls for either a can of the fire roasted tomatoes or tomato paste, both of which I was out of. As luck would have it, I had something very similar. This is a great product, by the way. It's an organic crushed tomatoes. And so actually, I think I'll just use a little bit smaller one here because I don't need to make a lot. And so what I'm gonna do is, and again, this is to taste. I'm gonna do a couple tablespoons of this, which looks like ketchup by itself, but I want it to taste like barbecue sauce. So I'm adding one of my truly favorite flavors, the smoked hickory balsamic. And so I'm going to do an equal amount. And again, this will be to taste. Some people like it more tomatoey. some people like it more barbecue saucy. If I just used the vinegar by itself, it would taste good, but it really wouldn't be thick enough for dipping. So there you have a very quick and easy, easy barbecue sauce that you can use for all your fries and baked potatoes. Super easy, super delicious. Now there's other flavors that would go well in here. So if you didn't have the smoked hickory, the sweet heat or the blazing habanero would be amazing. So we'll just put that over there. So there, four out of eight ways to use balsamic vinegar other than using them on raw salad. Okay, so here's my little page. I gotta remember what I'm making. Okay, ah, well, this one's super easy. Italian sodas. You know, there are more people addicted to soda, I think, than just about anything else, both sugar-free and regular. And it's just such a waste of calories. Liquid calories are never favorable for weight loss. It's a waste of money, and it's just not good for you. But people want something other than water, and so what I recommend is the balsamic vinegars. So we'll take our club soda. This is plain. Again, I'm really going to get a, a soda stream, but in the meantime, I'm just taking half the bottle. And I actually had a housewarming party recently. There was about 50 people there. And what was interesting is people know me. They know that I really can't keep plants alive. So everybody brought me balsamic vinegar. And we literally just had like a bar full of every flavor and people made their own sodas. And so all the flavors are good, but the one I'm really going to recommend, if I can find it, where did it go? Yes, okay. So. Any of the fruity ones would be good in sodas. Black cherry is amazing, peach, uh, the, the blackberry would be great, the strawberry would be great, the pear is phenomenal. But you know what I really love is the wild blueberry. Wild blueberry soda. Now, two tablespoons was the agreed upon amount for the masses in this party. 
and then a little bit of ice. Some people thought one was enough and there was one person that needed three, but this person was like a real sugar addict. But two tablespoons, it's still half as many calories as if you were getting a soda pop and it's delicious to your health. So Italian soda, five down, three to go. Okay, what else have we got? I know we're making other things. Maybe I did make more than that. Oh yes, okay, so now, we are going to make an amazing dressing that I actually just made up yesterday. So I recently got back from a vegan influencer leadership conference at the Balance for Life place in Florida where Dr. Frank Sabatino is the medical director. If you're not on my mailing list, consider signing up at chefajwebsite.com because next year is my 60th birthday on Sunday, March 22nd. And on Sunday, March 22nd, myself, Dr. Doug Lyle, and John Pierre, and other guests to be announced are going to have a retreat there at the Balance for Life. And I'll have a discount code for you where you can save at least $400 if you'd like to come and spend my 60th birthday with me. But this last week they had an amazing salad dressing at lunch and it was called Apple Fig Mustard. Well it was made by the hotel and they didn't seem to want to tell me how they made it. So I figured it out and it's phenomenal. So let me get the ingredients. I actually made a batch yesterday and it looked, and here it is, it looked and tasted just like the one from the hotel. And what I love about this is what I love about a lot of my recipes is they're easy ingredients, they're simple. I don't try to use complicated ingredients and I try to never use more than seven ingredients. This one has only three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an apple. Now, when you're using fruit, as I always do, the fruit, the whole fruit, nothing but the whole fruit, your yield of the recipe will only be as sweet as the fruit, which is why I make sure that my bananas are always ripe before I freeze them. The Envy Apple is called the Envy Apple because it's the envy of all apple. It's really the sweetest and best apple. It's better than Honeycrisp or John of Gold or Jonathan. Don't use a green apple in here. They're great, but not for this. So you want the sweetest apple that you can find. So I, because I was a real chef at a restaurant and a pastry chef, I did everything by weight. So I want 10 ounces of apples, so that's how I roll. And I know that this is 11 ounces because I weighed it and I weighed it the store. And when I take out this core, it's not gonna be that much. So I'm taking the largest Envy apple that I can find and putting it in the blender. Don't worry, my blender is only dirty from that banana milk and so I don't have a problem going from fruit to fruit. Just there we go. So I take my apple and I'm going to take one quarter cup of the mustard I showed you before, the West Gray salt free, and one quarter cup of the fig balsamic. I thought about using fresh or dried figs, but I just wanted to be able to make this all the time. Oh, perfect, this is, these bottles are great. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this vinegar when I'm done with the recipes, but perfect. Three ingredients, that's it. And this is so good. And there we have it, apple mustard fig vinegar. And this is what I made yesterday. It's thick, it's delicious, it will knock your socks off, it'll make salad eating delicious. I promise you. Okay. I don't know if that was uh, six now, two to go. So, let's see. Oh, this is heavy, guys. I can't even. Whoa, this is hard to lift up. Okay. But before I do that, I need to, it's getting hot in here under the lights. I need to actually make one more recipe. I am going to make, as soon as I find my blender, the ah, it's got something in it. Well, that's good because luckily I've got this beautiful carrot pitcher that Shada gave me. I'm going to put this in here so that I can use the blender again. Okay, so I am now going to make my creamy dill mustard potato salad. This is a brand new recipe that I just created because I felt like potato salad and I really haven't found a recipe that I truly love. I have a few that I like. Oh, how do you like that? That is the uh, Brussels sprouts. We'll get to those in a minute. I 
you don't mind. Just check it out here. Oh yeah, these look good. We'll get to those in a minute. I'll show them to you in just a moment. So, haven't found a, a potato salad recipe I love. Also, I have the problem that Charles just doesn't like potato salad. He eats my way, but there's just a few things he doesn't like, like quinoa, well, he's allergic actually, and uh, potato salad. So, I made it up myself. So what I'm gonna do is get the ingredients first that I've already prepped. That saves a lot of time when you make recipes if you prep everything in advance. And this is gonna be featuring the newest flavor from California Balsamic, which is called Dill Mustard Seed, and it's fabulous. It's gonna fly off the shelves, I know it. So, First, I'm gonna show you how to make the salad part, and then I'm gonna show you how to make the dressing. Now, dill mustard seed will not be available until early June, but that's only a few weeks away, so you'll have to hold out. So the first thing I did was, I steamed one and a half pounds of potatoes, because the bag was one and a half pounds, and I cut them into quarters and I chilled them. So I'm just gonna put them in the bowl. Then, how did I steam them? Well, I don't want to be using my oven, it's too hot here, so I steamed it in this wonderful Tupperware microwave cooker for 15 minutes. If you want one, just email Kurt at paddedproductions at yahoo.com. These are fabulous and you can travel with them. So then I'm going to add my secret ingredient. Instead of celery, it's fennel, one cup, finely chopped, and red onion, one cup, whoops, all over the counter finely chopped. And to get that nice fine chop, I use this tool that was $20 at Bed Bath & Beyond, Dahlia Chop Wizard. All right, so now how do I make the sauce? Right here I have 12 ounces of cauliflower that I steamed and chilled. Everywhere I go, it's always 12 ounces, the bag, the carton. And how did I steam it? Well, I made it in my other microwave, whoops, from Pampered Chef, six minutes in the microwave. So to this, I am going to first find my dill. Okay, where did you go? Ah, here it is. You gotta shake this one up because they use real, real herbs. And I'm going to add, I can find my measuring cup, a half a cup. Of the dill mustard. And so what it does is I'm actually making a cauliflower kind of, uh, kind of almost like a cream, and this is gonna be very much like mayonnaise. But when I add the dill mustard to it, it's gonna taste incredible. Blender going on. Incredibly thick and creamy. I'm gonna need a bigger bowl for mixing. just like mayo. But the flavor is incredible because we're using California balsamic. Dill mustard. And what's great about the California balsamic, you don't have to go to all the trouble to make a recipe, just use them over a veggie rice bowl. So there you have it. This is absolutely phenomenal. I made it last night. I gave it to one of my neighbors. And I'm going to put it back in the bowl. Now, everything needs to be served over greens, in my opinion. You've got to get those greens in. So here I have some arugula and some purslane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a scoop or two on. Of course, you want to chill it afterwards. And then I just like to sprinkle it with a little bit of fresh dill, and there we have it. A very healthy, delicious dressing and potato salad. Okay, last recipe. We are going to make dessert. So another way, Adriana, that you can use the California balsamic vinegars is as a Sunday topping. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make banana ice cream. 
So I'm using the Champion Juicer because to me that is the best machine for the buck. It makes the creamiest, unparalleled, thick and creamy ice cream. You want to make sure your bananas were frozen in advance so that they're not touching, they don't stick, they need to be really, really ripe. You turn the machine on, but of course it's always helpful if you plug it in. I learned that when I was a respiratory therapist. That's a funny story I can tell you a long time ago, or I can tell you soon. But... So. You can do this with any frozen fruit. I did it with jackfruit last week. It was amazing. Cherries are amazing. take your very favorite flavor of California balsamic. I like the blackberry on here and you just drizzle it over the top and you have a sundae. It doesn't show up color wise that color. The blueberry will probably show up a little bit better. And now you have a very, very delicious sundae. So there you have it, Adriana. Eight ways to use California balsamic vinegars without even having a raw vegetable. If you would like a free sample, and remember, it's free sample with purchase only, simply go to the website, californiabalsamic.com, and put my name, Chef AJ, in the leave us a message box, and Thomas Allen, the wonderful owner, will let you choose two free samples of these small 1.8 ounce bottles. These five right here are the Chef AJ sampler. These are my favorite savory flavors. The three ounce bottles are wonderful because you can get them through TSA. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Chef AJ and I truly believe you can have the health and the body you so richly deserve. And California balsamic vinegars is one way to help you get there. Take care, bye.